everybody. Welcome to Radio Labyrinth. This is Season 7, Episode 40. That means we've done 40 episodes in 2022. Can you believe that? No. I don't either. <laughs> I I have a bit of a cold um, that I believe I caught from uh, Young Gil, who was always picking up some sort of virus from his daycare. Last week he had double ear infection and a double, uh, what you call it, a conjunctivitis. He had pink eye. And so now well, it could be also allergies because it's really bad right now. And I mowed the grass last week. I think it was Friday I did that. And we didn't have any rain, so it was all dust and everything. So that's why I sound this way. And I may have to cough every once in a while. So hope that doesn't bother you. No, that's no the show. coughing. No coughing allowed. That's the show. That's the end of that's the end of the show. No, 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 no. We have a good show for you tonight. We have Josh Warren joining us, who's going to be talking about uh, the Bigfoot documentary he is making. It's actually not about Bigfoot. It is about a Bigfoot convention that he and his producers went to. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? I Believe in Bigfoot. Yes, it's I Believe in Bigfoot, and you can find it at uh, on Facebook. I like anything having to do with Bigfoot. I always have. When I was a little kid, I believed in Bigfoot because it was scary, and I didn't want to go anywhere near the woods. I don't know that I do now. Maybe. I don't know. Could there be a a, a, a cryptoid running around that's seven, know. eight feet tall? Who knows? I don't, I don't think I don't think if there was proof, anyone would believe it, you know, anyway. So it doesn't it's kind of the perfect time for there to be a Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. With all the people that believe birds aren't real. Yeah, or they're drones. <laughs> yeah. That the earth is flat. Yeah. Or like uh, the late, great Mitch Hedberg said, I believe Bigfoot is blurry. That's the problem. There's a big, <laughs> scary, blurry monster running around. No, but they have. Uh, they went to this uh, convention or, or Bigfoot uh, get-together, and all sorts of interesting people are interviewed. And I love these people because those are people that spend a lot of time in the woods, outdoors type of people who dedicate their whole lives to tracking and trying to find this. And Who's to say that it's not real? Who's to say that there isn't a Bigfoot? I have a friend who I believe listens to the show from time to time who uh, told me that he saw Bigfoot. No. Yeah, yeah. He took us to the place where he saw Bigfoot. And no we way. made fun of him. And he said, I saw Bigfoot. <laughs> well, you don't make fun of me. So Bigfoot. No, he didn't. He says he did. I got to take him at his word. I've never known him to lie before. Why would he lie? He's a trustworthy person. So I don't see why he would uh, lie about seeing Bigfoot. He saw something that he thought was Bigfoot. Uh, what were the gorillas are running around in upstate New York? No, it was a bear or something. A bear? A bear doesn't talk. They didn't talk to him. <laughs> now they, they talk. They gave him okay. his, they read him his horoscope. It recommended uh, micro beers, a micro brew beer, a good money. And then, wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't this just like a hippie place, like somewhere in North Carolina? No, no, no. This was in uh, this was in upstate New York, like Asheville. I saw Lee Majors fighting Bigfoot one time. Yeah, you were eight years old. You know, I yeah, saw him fighting Andre the Giant, and I just thought it was really weird. Like he needed to shave. Why would he or fight himself? Andre the Giant was Bigfoot. <laughs> I believe in Bigfoot. I believe in Bigfoot. Okay, I found the page on Facebook while we were riffing. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Let us know. Call 1-800-BULLSHIT, and we'll get you on there. Um, I believe in Bigfoot. I believe in UFOs. I believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Obviously, the Loch Ness Monster is real. Why wouldn't it be? Um, so that movie will be coming out, and when Josh joins us, we'll, we'll, we will talk about it. Um, let's see. Got a couple of plugs. Hey, welcome to our brand-new Radio Labyrinth producer, uh, her name is Terry Fuller. She and her family live in Virginia. And I was very curious. She is a, a very big supporter and booster of the Von Hessler Doctrine. And she she listens to all the shows that we do. And um, I was just curious how some uh, people from Virginia would have heard of the Von Hessler Doctrine, let alone this. And it turns out that I believe her husband's family is from Georgia. And uh, her husband was a regular guy's fan. And uh, I think that's cool. So thank you for um, for signing up at the producer level, level Terry, and be on the lookout for your T-shirt, which will be coming soon. Speaking of T-shirts, uh, our Radio Labyrinth T-shirt with the uh, with the uh, Stranger Things design logo um, 
I wasn't able to manipulate that, but now I put it up. I think you can get it in any size. So I'm going to be sending one to our guest from last week, Adam. And I want Ooh. to thank, thank him again for coming on the show. That was a fun show. I hope everybody liked it. Uh, Greg Russ joined me last week for the Popcast. It was a podcast only show. We didn't go on the air with that one because when Georgia football's you know, prime time or late afternoon, the podcast doesn't air. So that'll be sporadic throughout the the football season. Go dogs. Uh, but uh, we had a good time. Uh, check it out. It was a fun conversation. Greg bought an expensive watch. We talked about his friendship with Vincent D'Onofrio that he uh, derailed. And we'll find out why he could have been. Better. Adam's Adam Murray's a big watch guy too. Is he really? Yeah. I, I'm not, I don't like watches. Yeah. I, mean, I just have an Apple watch. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first watch I've had since I was a teenager with an Apple watch. And I was like, yeah. I had a, I used to have a nice watch, but they fall off. I have small wrists. <laughs> you have dainty wrists. I have dainty wrists, a dainty Irish wrist, like Lindsey Graham wrists. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that was fun. And I'm going to be, since this is out on Saturdays, yesterday, which is Friday, uh, October 7th, I think. Yeah, uh, I was on uh, the most recent episode of the Propaganda Report. Uh, that is a guy named Binkley, and he's friends with Josh Warren. Uh, the show's interesting. Talks about pop culture, talks about conspiracies and stuff like that. You can uh, find out more about that at propagandafight.com. Uh, but I was on that episode and it was fun to do. Howard Stern did come out of his house. He was like uh, the, the Pelicanized version of uh, the uh, Groundhog Day. <laughs> I don't know. Did he go to New York or did he go out to eat in Florida where he lives? Uh, I just heard he went out to eat for the first time in three years. Yeah, he's probably at home now, like bathing in, um, in uh, hand sanitizer. He's really paranoid. I get it, though. I get it. I don't like I'm afraid of things. But I also have to go out. Damn, if I had a spread like that, though, I think I could hang out for a couple of years and not worry about it. Yeah, but That's I don't know. Huge. If if he were in a studio and all of his staff members were in that studio with him and they were doing the show, it's going to be a much better show. The way they do it now, everybody's on Zoom. Uh, hang on. Yes, Josh. You have time to burn a cigarette. I'm <laughs> Josh might be in an interesting um, uh, state when he joins. <laughs> and that is that is up to him. And he was talking about a cigarette, by the way. But it is up to him whether or not he wants to to reveal it. And you'll have to guess and see um, what cough medicine he's taking. Uh, but we, yes, again, we are going to be talking to him. But what are you watching? Watching here. What are you watching? Okay, so what are we watching? <laughs> what are we watching? We watch. I don't really have much. I didn't really watch much anything. I've been watching football, loving football. The Manning cast, I was telling Jeff about it the other night. The Manning cast is the best way to watch Monday Night Football. The bonus is you don't have to watch Joe Buck and uh, Troy Aikman, although I don't dislike them. Uh, it's just way more entertaining to watch the game and listen to Peyton and Eli talk and uh, listen to some of the guests that they have on. They're definitely a lot funnier. Yeah, they're funny. Yeah. Uh, the other this this the game between the Rams and the 49ers was interesting to me because there was a, a an idiot ran on the field with a smoke bomb and a t shirt with a dot com on it to promote some sort of anti animal cruelty thing. Nobody likes being cruel to animals. I don't. I mean, some people do. I don't. Uh, but this person runs on the field, and of course, what does every major network do when something like that happens? They pull their cameras away. Because it discourages it from happening. Uh, but even Peyton was like, no, I want to see it. We're the B team. Show it, show it. Hey, Eli, find out. And Eli looked so nervous. I don't think we're allowed. I don't know. I mean, that's just the look. I said, no, 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 roll it, roll it, roll it. Then they showed it. And uh, this uh, defensive lineman from the Rams tackles this dude and just <laughs> throws him to the ground. And uh, and Peyton did the whole play. See, that's, you're trained to do that. You sit on the bench, and then you go after him, and then you knock him down. See, that was a perfect play. I mean, he nailed it. He got him down on the ground. <laughs> Say what you will, but I, I want the Giants to draft Chad Powers for, for the game this week. Chad Powers? But he has to wear the makeup, too. He has yeah. to have the hair and the nose and the mustache. How did those people not know? Eli had a unique throwing style. I guess maybe they're too young. Yeah, probably. 
Don't you think some of them knew that it was e- Eli Manning? If you're not I imagine that, with the cameras and stuff there. For people who aren't aware of what you're talking about, tell people. Yeah, Eli Manning put a put a bunch of prosthetics and makeup on and then tried out for Penn State as a walk on. As a walk on, yeah. And he looked like and you could see the people that dude's like forty years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The makeup did did not do anything for his age, that's for sure. No, and he threw like a cannon. Like these these yeah. receivers. <laughs> He was overthrowing these wideouts and stuff. But again, I'm watching football. Congratulations to Aaron Judge for hitting his 62nd home run, which makes him the home run king in the American League and also the home run king of people who didn't use steroids. Yeah, no asterisks necessary. Nope, nope, no asterisks. You going to get that baseball card? What baseball card? They issued a baseball card uh, that had uh, him and the previous record holder. Roger Maris? Yeah, together on the same card, and it's only going to be available for 24 hours. Where? Tops.com? Yep. Well, the answer to your question is no. no. <laughs> you don't have any of the good cards. I, I, I say that TikTok of, of uh, Macho Man baseball card, you don't have that. It's not a real baseball card. Yes, it is. No, it is not a real baseball card. There's never a baseball it card. It looks like a real baseball card. Randy Poffo. I know it does because it's a mock-up, but it's and it's using the year he would have been on a baseball card if they had made one of him. But they did not ever make a baseball card of him. Yeah, because I would have had it because it's a novelty, and I would have loved it because I liked the Macho Man, and uh, he was uh, drafted by the Cardinals to play baseball, but he wasn't ever put on a baseball card ever. That card is a, is a mock-up. There's a lot of those out there. People make them in photoshop and then sell them they're not really collector's item unless it's something like it would be an item that somebody might want uh, but there's a lot of these guys out there now who draw baseball cards and they use the old format of the the baseball cards from various years to do like put the replacements on them or put uh, the sex pistols or any band you name it or an actor did, or you, did, you, did you have that baseball card that said fuck face on the bat i have it yeah I have it. you have one Yes. Nice. I had, yeah. Fuck face was Billy Ripken card, <laughs> 1986 tops, or it might have been 87. I forget which year. Now, maybe, I don't know what year it is. Uh, I also have the one that uh, was in the first Simpsons comic book, and I shouldn't have ever taken it out of the wrapper. It's uh, one of the players on the, what's the name of the Adams? Is it the Springfield Adams? And uh, it says fish face on it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's, a repli- it's like based on that Billy Ripken. It's Rip- book like right that. Yeah, it's just, it just says fish fat, fish face. Nice. That is one of my favorite baseball cards. There's also uh, a baseball card from the 1972 top set of Billy Martin when he was a manager of the Tigers. He's holding on a baseball bat and his middle finger's out because he hated it. <laughs> and that got printed and no one ever noticed. But I have that one because I like Billy Martin, but also it's an oddity. Or the, the Oscar Gamble card where they painted the Yankee hat on him and it says Yankees take a gamble on Oscar. That's the 1976 traded set. It kind of excited me uh, when I heard the story because they said what the Johnson brothers were saying was true, some kind of a monster up there. So they didn't know at the time if if the guys had been eaten, carried away, or just what had happened maybe because they weren't aware of Bigfoot. Nobody was hunting for Bigfoot at the time or looking for it. It was on anybody's radar. And then I started seeing things appear on the nightly news in Miami about the Florida skunk ape. And uh, it got me attention immediately because they weren't talking about a a monkey. They were talking about some kind of a huge man-like creature that was much bigger and faster and stronger than an ape or a gorilla. I said, good God, it's over top the fence. I said, what is that? I said, who are you? And they went, whoa! They went, whoa! They throwed a big rock and it landed right by me. I said, bam! I shot, boom! Well, that thing squalled out. I started noticing things. I started finding things, tracks, the odd structures or formations that we could actually rule out that weren't natural based off of weather. Um, Structures or formations that were constructed by something or someone that has opposable thumbs. Turned to walk back up the woods and it stopped. 
and it turned and it looked at me and then it squared up with me. And we stood there and had a moment, eye to eye contact. And then here come a car zoomed in there. Lo and behold, it was my dad. My dad, I guess God sent, sent him to pick us up that time. And we both hopped in the back seat and said, let's go daddy, let's go to something after us. He just laughed at it. He said, oh, there ain't nothing in them woods, boys. We pitch camp, we get up the next morning, get up in the cabin, we go back to the spot. There is a partial print where this thing stepped up on the bank because at the time, the bank was probably four and a half, five feet up above the trail he walked up. We found a partial footprint in the bank and we're all so excited. So then I'm like, well, look at the tree. So then we go up in the tree and you can see at about the eight and a half foot mark, this thing took and twisted off limbs. And it was clearing its line of eyesight view to watch us down there. It was watching us the whole time. We were down there at the truck just goofing around, you know, trying to figure if we had the nerve to go back into the woods. Uh, my name is Rick. Raven Valentino, a lot of people know me as a pro wrestler. I've been a professional wrestler since Dirt was created. Uh, ended up doing a few movies, TV shows. As far as paranormal, and this is my first interview I've ever led anyone, I'm gonna tell some stuff that I've never told anyone. Well, Josh, we were talking earlier in the show that you're, you're coming on to talk about uh, the documentary that you're working on called I Believe in Bigfoot. But tell us about I Believe in Bigfoot, um, if you want, and uh, when we can look forward to it. Because Bigfoot's a big, scary monster. And, and we were saying that Mitch Hedberg always had this great joke. Uh, rest in peace, Mitch Hedberg. He said, I believe Bigfoot is blurry. That is the problem. And that makes him extra scary. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, so uh, this dude Kelly Lackman uh, and Ian Covell approached us about doing a documentary called I Believe in Bigfoot, um, which most of us are skeptics aside from Kelly. Kelly's gone like, he's he's deep into it now. He's, he's going on a, a hunt at the end of the month. Uh, he just bought this like, this predator style, like scope, like a okay. thermal scope. Uh -huh. like he's he's checked in when it comes to all this stuff he was like man you know i really think there's a good chance us going on this hunt with ron and the squatch watchers we're squatch gonna find watchers. bigfoot <laughs> yeah the squatch watchers i got to meet all these like big he's foot. talking about ron moorhead right the, he's a, yeah, a big yeah, time but, bigfoot dude in the, yeah, in the bigfoot yeah, community the, the quantum uh, quantum bigfoot he's the guy who recorded the sierra sounds right. like in our trailer if you listen real closely at the beginning and the end all that like right. like apparently bigfoot sounds like uh like old samurais at times like you can hear them in the background be like <laughs> maybe they are maybe they are samurais so there's a bunch of people who are, are bigfoot enthusiasts get together from all walks of life there are people who have seen it or people that hunt or people that track and find relics or footprints and stuff like that but there were some interesting people the the, the one guy and i never remember his name was his name wild man Oh, uh, uh, Turtle Man. Turtle Man. Turtle, Turtle Man. Man. That guy had his own show for a while. Yeah. Do it. Do it. And Turtle Out. That's his. Uh, he's he's like uh, he's he's kind of like uh, the the Tiger King in a way, but for turtles, I guess. Yeah, and probably not as creepy. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> it would be very difficult. I wouldn't want anyone to compare me. Well, you're like the Tiger King of uh, of uh, insurance sales. Well, what I mean is like he's just like a character, right? Yeah. Like, the dude's like all the, like uh... Ernie Brown Jr. is his name. His show was called "Of the Wild Man." Uh, we had him on the regular guy show once. He was so cool, and he's an interesting cat. And he he does in the trailer for for your movie that's coming up. He's doing the. Uh, <laughs> exactly i tried to do it too and i wanted to throw up uh tim's chugging straight vodka mm -hmm. 
Yep. No, this is a Bigfoot piss. <laughs> Make sure to ingest some. Get that in the bloodstream. <laughs> Most yeah. of the people at that convention, though, were just like, you know, Woodland, Tennessee folks. So, like, yeah. and like there was a... <laughs> they had... <laughs> They had people cosplaying as uh, the Dukes of Hazard. What did that have to do with Bigfoot? I don't know, but like, uh, <laughs> you had like Dukes of Hazard cosplayers. You had like, uh, there was like a Dwight Schrute cosplayer. They were selling like uh, all, all the Stranger Things, birth, like box Stranger Things, like, well, I printed it myself, uh, t shirts and stuff <laughs> like that. So people were just cosplaying because it was a convention, and apparently now every convention you go to, someone's in cosplay. I, I guess, but like they had like a, there was like the eighteen van was out there. I didn't what? see any cosplayers though, which was really disappointing. You didn't see any what? Eighteen cosplayers. One of the hosts was Daisy Duke too. <laughs> Daisy Duke sequel, too. and that's what they called her. <laughs> And not Daisy Duke. She was Daisy Duke too. Yeah, because like Catherine Bach. You can't have Catherine Bach out there in, in Daisy Duke shorts and a tied off shirt anymore. There's it was wow. it was the craziest place I've ever been to in my life. <laughs> um now the, 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 they did they have the Dodge Charger that was orange with the uh, Confederate Oh uh, yeah, General Lee. Yeah, they had that on the roof, the, the Confederate flag. Oh, I mean, they were like the the people, the the, the Dukes cosplayers were were just hawking uh, Confederate memorabilia left and right, mm. just like had a whole tent. Still a market for that, huh? <laughs> and somewhere in nowhere, Tennessee, there <laughs> location, is. location, location, location. <laughs> yes, <laughs> location redacted Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they've gone back through all the Ken Burns documentary and digitally uh, uh, erased it. They just put a, a smiley face on it. <laughs> uh, that's that's cool. You know, Dukes of Hazard, for all of its faults, and let's say that there may have been one or two, they were good boys. Oh, and yeah. They, they've stood up. They were for, good old boys. They were good old boys who, for some reason, uh, had a whole moonshine operation but never ran moonshine. And uh, and uh, Boss Hog and uh, Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane uh, had to know that they weren't running moonshine anymore. So I, why were they beefing on them? I don't know. Wouldn't it have been great if, in the, like, at the end of the first season, they just would have shot Roscoe. The- <laughs> <laughs> and then every time they drove home, they jumped over his, you know, his corpse. It's like the, the, the whole who shot JR thing, but who yeah. shot Roscoe? Who shot Roscoe? They shot him with arrows. <laughs> yeah. Flash! It was Flash the whole time. Yeah, yeah Flash. Come on, Flash. Let's get to this dude. <laughs> and Enos. Oh, shot. yeah. Well, Enos has a whole, like, uh, amusement park up in uh, Gatlinburg. That Enos mm-hmm. guy, the actor? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Enos. He was, the like, uh, the mechanic for them, right? Yeah, no, Enos, no, Cooter. That was Cooter. Cooter, Cooter was the mechanic, yeah. And he also so was when I get to say I'm the Cooters got a, a He was in Congress, one. you know, he was a yeah. Congress. Cooter. Oh. Cooter and Gopher. Gopher Love from Boat. Uh, Love yeah. Boat. Yeah, Gary, he was from, what was his name? Gary something, he's from Indiana. But Enos was an idiot. The network was an idiot. So they, oh, Enos is a popular character on uh, Dukes of Hazard. so let's rope him over to... Uh, you know, his own show that failed, and then he never came back. What show did they give him? Enos. There was a whole show called Enos? Yes, and it did not last very long. It sounded too much like anus. Yeah, or penis. <laughs> penis. <laughs> penis. <laughs> enos was a 19... 19- penis. It was a sitcom that was on CBS, and, of course, Sonny Schroyer, who played Enos, was on it. Uh, and then a bunch of people that are forgettable. What year was that? 1980. 80. Yeah, I don't know how many episodes there are. Let's see. Uh, 10, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, it ran a full season. There's 18 episodes of it. Wow. It's not even like a, uh, it's not even like Kenobi limited no. series only run. <laughs> no, it was like uh, the book of Boba Fett. 
where uh like an episode five they brought in roscoe so more viewers would enjoy it <laughs> no, if it was like boba fett they'd have brought in the duke boys in episode yes, five and it just been go. dukes of hazard the rest of the season they digi digitized the duke boys and they came in and rescued uh uh baby uh baby boss hog well it wasn't the duke the boys it was their cousins hog. it was those two guys that came in oh, yeah, for Coy the and oh yeah 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 oh, one season Coy and one season okay. yes nobody watched it They're like uh let's give the uh original guys what they want i got i got met tom wopat in a bar once he was luke duke and it was at uh, a place where i used to work called mark's brothers i was the dishwasher or the cook or whatever and uh as Tom Wopat was at the bar and no one was paying any attention to him. And I knew it was him. And I went out and I said, Hey, uh, my boss likes celebrities to sign menus. Could I get you to sign a menu? And he just looks at me and he goes, can you get my bill and get me the fuck out of here? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, I could do that. And at that time I was also working at a country radio station and he had a single out. So one way I buttered him up, as I said, I love that song. You did uh, too many honky tonks. <laughs> I didn't really like that song at all, but I had to play it. And the song was called Too Many Honky Tonks on my way home. You can find it if you find it, if you Google it. And I said, yeah, uh, I really like that. I, we played it a lot at my radio station. He goes, oh, I'm in town. Uh, I'm going to be doing a show at the county fair if you want to go. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll go. I'm not going. <laughs> I think he and, canceled a couple years later. I don't know, but he ended up hooking up with one of my fraternity brother's girlfriend and the <laughs> guy was so pissed he couldn't watch the dukes anymore he's like tom opat took my girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weirdly enough i have also have a tom opat story not personally but uh where i grew up in in east tennessee there's a town <clears throat> called lake city and it's actually called rocky top now they changed the name of it big to do <clears throat> but uh he married a girl that we went to high school went to our high school and it was like the biggest thing in two counties, you know, when Tom Wopat comes to town, woos this young girl and marries her in that town and everybody shows up. It was like the president was getting married or something. <laughs> it was nuts. And every, yeah, ever since then he was, he, all I heard were stories of him being a dick, just like everywhere <laughs> he was. If uh, Tom Wopat, you were young, nubile, and Tom Wopat offered to take you off to Hollywood or Nashville or whatever. <laughs> fuck he lived would you go covington go. georgia mm -hmm. <laughs> come back with me to covington georgia hey if uh, cooter if i ran into cooter at a bar and he wanted to lay me down in a bed of roses and <laughs> cart me off to tennessee i'd go with him yeah. my mom taught john schneider tap dancing oh <laughs> your mom is a tap dance instructor oh yeah she was all kinds of she did all kinds of dancing. That's awesome that she taught uh, John. John Snyder is an entertainer. Then he's he's a man of many talents. Yeah, he's a triple threat. <laughs> <laughs> movie star, Superman's dad. Was he in a movie? Was he was on? Um, he was on what? Uh, small t Smallville, right? Yeah, yeah, Smallville. He was Superman's dad on that, right? He was Clark uh, Kent. Yeah, John Kent. Yes. He got swept up in a tornado. Another Superman movie. I thought he died in a car crash. And uh, and Man of Steel, he got swept up in a tornado. That's right. It was Man of Steel, not the movie, right? Not the TV show. It was the movie. Yeah, yeah, the movie. Then the guy who plays Superman and Superman Returns, didn't he play Jesus? No, mm. that it's a different Henry. I know you're talking. They have a diff they have similar last names. Henry Cavill uh was in uh uh was in the Tudors. And also he's on The Witcher. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Witcher. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the Superman Returns Superman. John uh, Ralph? Ralph? Brand Brandon Ralph. Yeah. Ralph. Nah, I must be I must be, I'm confusing him. I'm confusing <laughs> him with the uh with the guy from uh, the, from the Passion the, of the Christ, Passion of the Christ. Now that's Jim, but uh, Caviezel, Casval, yeah, Jim Caviezel and Henry Caviezel, Caviezel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they ain't related. No. Well, so the dude who played Jesus supposedly got struck by lightning while up on the cross. Really? Did yeah. he get superpowers? 
I mean, he became Jesus. <laughs> he, he became an <laughs> asshole after that movie. So yeah, I think so. I couldn't finish that movie. I had to, I went to the theater to see it, and it was really gruesome and uh, very much torture porn. And I, I just decided I couldn't watch it. That but there was a little scene was insane. Oh yeah. South Park did it well when they're like uh, they're <laughs> yeah. watching it, and then all you hear is. Ah! So when is the when can we expect? I believe in Bigfoot to uh, to be out and available to watch. If I had to take a guess, probably like uh, spring or fall of next year. Okay. Just because we're we're still in production right now, we still have uh, interviews uh, with other experts, and then he's got his uh, he's got his big hunt coming up at the end of October. We're gonna catch Bigfoot on that hunt. Wouldn't it be great if they caught Bigfoot, smack him around till he tells everybody where the rest of the big feet are? <laughs> it's not just fun. If they just Jack Bauer him. <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> Un- unravel slowly, unravel the uh, the lamp, uh, the wire, and put it on his nipples like you did. <laughs> <guy> on- <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed that guy and I said, what was that scene like? Was it intense? You know, when he put the, uh, the uh, wires on your nipples and he goes, I didn't really do that. <laughs> I know. But when you're filming the scene, was it intense? He goes, no, it's acting <laughs> really smug. What? <laughs> what an asshole. Yeah. There was nothing intense about drunk Kiefer Sutherland smoking a cigarette about to electrocute me. <laughs> That was an intense scene. You watch it; it's like he's gonna jab this guy's nipples, just because he was married to Kim, and you know he's jealous. It's yeah. called acting, darling. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's you are Lawrence Olivier? Olivier? Yeah, it's those, it's those people that are like the method people. Yeah. They're like, I have to take the character home with me and torture my wife with it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like, no, you're a psychopath. Yes. <laughs> hey, get getting back to the Dukes of Hazard for a second. You know. They did shoot the first season here, but then they moved it out to Hollywood. You know, every time they drove around any place, you're looking at the set and you're like, I thought I just saw a Hawkeye walking through here because it was the same set as MASH, the same hills. That's when you start realizing all these things. Oh, yeah, the Planet of the Apes was over here. You know? <laughs> and any of those, those, I guess I'm assuming it was a Paramount show because that was their lot. But it's just weird to see all the same scenes. Anytime the Duke's car was driving around or jumping a ravine, it was the same, like, it was Korea. Yeah, it's like going to uh, Universal Studios theme park. Yes, which is fun, by the way. Everything but the the uh, Twister. When was the last time you went? When did we go, Jeff? 2014? Yeah, it's been 2016, maybe. No, because I was still with the regular guys, so it was either 2013 or 2014. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. We went there and... Uh, the transformer ride was scary. It was cool. A just, lot has changed, I think. Yeah, I liked uh, Bill Bill, uh, Bill Paxton talking to you about tornado. Ah, this isn't real, but you have to be really careful because a tornado might come and get you. I've been killed by a Terminator and a Predator. Fuck, what does he say? <laughs> I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. You're close. Give them to me now. Fuck you, asshole. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you. I just watched that the other day. (laughs) I love that guy, man. What did he die of? That was sad. Uh, That is sad. He was it was great. I remember uh this guy when I went to UCB in like the early two thousands, he was like do you know who you remind me of? Like the way you look, your cadence, everything about you. I was like, well, my mom taught me Matt Damon. <laughs> and, uh, and it was like Bill Paxton, man. I was like, all right, I'll take that. I'll take Bill Paxton. Yeah, there's worse people to be compared to. Yeah. It's in rest in peace, Bill Paxton. You smash some bugs, man. <laughs> Yeah, that but that that uh, attraction at Universal Studios is super boring. Yeah, they put you in a big <laughs> in a big uh, auditorium. It was like a wind tunnel, and then the stop sign, <laughs> <laughs> and then you get some mist on you. Have some water that's been flowing through a pipe for five years. 
non-potted water. Yeah, yeah. So you get uh, Legionnaires. He comes over at the end and he says, we're going to get to the bottom of this, but first I'm going to butter your muff. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of it, you get a, a pork chop sandwich served in a dirty ashtray. <laughs> It's horizontal rain. <laughs> I didn't think it was a whale's dick. Is that <laughs> mine or is that hers? Oh, wait. This is a Persian pushing missile, Chet. Well, I didn't think it was a whale's dick. <laughs> is that from uh, Weird Science? Weird Science, yeah. yeah. Uh, no guff, Chet. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, they, she turns him into that monster. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's like a big shit monster. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, the underrated one. What was it? Uh, is it the Hills Have Eyes that he's in? Or is it uh, Near Dark? Near Dark. Near yeah. Dark. Yeah, that's a good one. And then the one where uh, we have to kill our, those people are demons. Oh, yeah. Frailty? Yeah. Frailty's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff and I saw nuts. Well, you're not a demon, are you, son? <laughs> <laughs> was that Luke Wilson or Owen Wilson? No. No, it was Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was young, though. Mm-hmm. It's my yeah, dad. It's really young. Hunter, my dad said, uh, you just have to go out and kill the demons. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I wanted to wait. Dad, I became a detective talking yeah. about multiple universe theory. Before that, I was a priest banging uh, the hot Jodie Foster. <laughs> after that, I was an astronaut. <laughs> Same after, world. That's right. I went through a time shift or wormhole whatever they are i don't like to put a name on things that i don't understand <laughs> i just like to do it then i got an oldsmobile i drive I, an oldsmobile. I keep watching that scene in interstellar now that we have a 4k tv yes and i just keep watching that scene on repeat where he's like inside inside of the we built this murph that old <laughs> that old sequence uh -huh. i'm stuck in there constantly now <laughs> I tried watching 2001 Space Odyssey recently. You don't like it? Did you like it? it you it, with, this is a Space Odyssey. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what Interstellar is, right? It's uh, a modern day 2001. Hey, Hal, open the Pod Bay Daughters place. That scene at the beginning with the monkeys yeah. mm -hmm. takes like 25 minutes. Mm hmm. Yep. And I was just like, when does the space shit, like, when, the, <laughs> when, when does the, uh, the, what the fuck is that thing? The monolith. The monolith. Yeah, the monolith. I was, I'm just waiting on the monolith to come. Well, they throw the, they throw that bone in the air and then that becomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that the becomes spaceship. the ship. Yes. That uh, movie is crazy. It is crazy. You've ever seen 2010 with Roy Scheider? Yeah. that's my favorite one yeah yeah it's nothing at all like 2001 first of all kubrick had nothing to do with it and uh and it's roy scheider so you get that intensity that jaws intensity except they're at <laughs> uh, yeah and he's a he's the story. really uh, 2001, in my opinion, it's a better story i don't think 2001 really made any sense it wasn't supposed to the book makes a lot of sense if you read yeah. the book the book makes absolute sense. The movie they had to change some things. They first of all they changed the the planet from Saturn to Jupiter, uh, the original planet. But yeah, yeah okay. In the in the, you have John Lithgow, Helen Mirren, um, Bob Balaban, who seemed to be in everything in the eighties, seventies, anything space related. Bob Balaban was in it. Um, Bob Balaban, what a man! Yes. He's he's, he's an, a great guy. Remember, he got upset. Like Bo, Bogdan Bogdanovich. And then the Bogdan Duke boys Bogdan. were on Europa. <laughs> That's why they didn't want you to land there, because the Duke boys were creating a civil society and you know, good all, moonshiners. All of these counties are yours, except for Hazard. <laughs> Leave it alone. Like no attempt to jump your car <laughs> over a ravine there. Y'all here? Hey, will I dream? I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. <laughs> How? Y'all, the y'all, the y'all, y'all 9,000. I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. The y'all 9,000? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Duke car. Let's <laughs> 
floating through space like the like the one that uh l ron hubbard or not l ron hubbard uh elon musk elon yeah. musk shot into the air hey dave i'm afraid my mind's going i can feel it <laughs> <laughs> don't unplug them yeah don't unplug hey dave I got to tell you this, man. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. All right. This mission's too goddamn important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. All right. So what we're going to do is you're going to float out there until I find out what the fuck's going on with that monolith. Yeah. So why did he become a space baby at the end of it? Who? The dude in 2001. Dave. He didn't Dave. Do uh, Dave. He didn't what become. You, the Dave? entities took him to an alternate reality so he would understand what was going on but he didn't have the capacity to understand it until he became one with the entity and he wasn't the baby the baby was an alien life form yeah and it was yeah and they expand on it more in 2010 it kind of actually they did it on purpose i think to kind of give it some closure as far as his character but he comes back in that Mm -hmm. (laughs) so he made it through that like uh, 30 years later no well well, in 2010, he's an old man. Through the everything. Art, he flew through ink art mm-hmm. How that? To, to get to the space, baby. Yes, yes. And then there's a book after, there's two books after that. There's 2060, and then there's one that takes place a long, long time after that, where Christianity and Islam have emerged, and it's called Chrislam. And uh, you know that in... <laughs> 2010 jupiter becomes a sun and it has its own system and so the earth has two suns um some say that's what happened before except it was saturn and that's why saturn has that hexagon on it what, oh, I got the, 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 the dot that they don't know what's going on there's the a hexagon out i'm telling you there's a hexagon on top of saturn and when it spins real fast you see the star david and that's how well, the Saturn runs everything. Yeah, and it's talking to us through Q. That's right. Q and on is from from Saturn. He grew up on thing <laughs> and and he flew on a rock here. He knows that Donald Trump is going to uh, is still the president, and uh, he's he's running it from his secret bunker in Florida, and uh, all that. My God, <laughs> it's full of shit. <laughs> My God, it's full of shit. The Earth has two sons and two cousins, Bo and Luke. That's yeah, right. just think if they if Trump was the one in two thousand one. I'm afraid I can't do that, Don. He's like, you know, I'm just gonna have to unplug these life support things or whatever's going on inside of you. I can open the pod bay doors just by thinking about it. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump, this conversation serves no purpose anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> We're just going to unplug you, Dave. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer due. I'm half crazy for all the love of you. <laughs> Daisy. You think how things Daisy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daisy, that, whole, that whole thing at the end. It's also yeah. playing while, um, what's the the ch- Japanese guy's name in Revenge of the Nerds? He's riding the rice, the bicycle, the rice sickle. <laughs> the rice sickle. <laughs> that, that was not the- intentional <laughs> at all. <laughs> it was a choice. Tell me that's the title of this episode. Oh, it can't be. You're gonna, <laughs> it's gonna get canceled again. It was completely rice unintentional. <laughs> it is Daisy, Daisy. I now you have to draw a picture thing. of a guy riding a rice sickle. Hachi? Yeah. Dang, Anybody. Rice. Dave in this space suit. Right yeah, Dave. Dave. <laughs> and then the big space babies. Like, he's riding the rice sickle into the space baby. Just don't put the Confederate flag on the, the yeah. vehicle that you do. <laughs> Hey, do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Like, do you need a Confederate flag on top of your Dodge Charger? 
No, I don't think they would do that for you. But if you're looking for what I just mentioned, contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They are in Athens, Georgia, since 2005, almost 20 years, with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706-316-9366 or email them at athens at ldiline.com. And we thank Brett for all of his support over the years. Thank you, man. It was nice meeting you a couple weeks ago. Uh, and we can't forget the best pizza in uh, Conyers, if not the entire east side, maybe in the entire metro Atlanta area. Thank you to Atlanta Pizza in Euro, our longtime sponsor, and to Mike Hall. Stop by the restaurant and grab an ice-cold local craft beer like Wicked Weed's Pernicious IPA in cans and Tantrum Brewing's Poems at Midnight Sour, Berliner Weisse, which is on tap. If you're a business or corporate client who's looking for a food truck for your next private event or catered luncheon, contact Mike Hall at Atlanta Pizza in Euro by calling 770-483-6228. Uh, they are open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday from 12 to 9, closed on Sundays. And uh, recently there was a, a some sort of film production. We can't really say yet because uh, we promised that we wouldn't and we uh, but they shot something at the restaurant and josh you helped get that arranged right yeah 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 my uh my buddy was doing location scouting yeah and he called and he was like hey you know how many pizza places <laughs> as a matter of fact i do yes <laughs> you know many pizza places with glory holes as a matter of fact <laughs> I, I got one of those too i got a guy for everything uh, yeah, so uh, Mike said it went really, really well, and uh, so we'll hear more about that, and of course we'll promote it when it's uh, ready to go. And we're going to do the the 30th, right, at Atlanta Pizza Nero for lunch? Yes. For Halloween? We are going to get together for Halloween. Uh, we won't be recording the show, but we'll be there from Just noon. hanging to... out. Yeah, hanging out. You can come in costumes if you like. Um, if you do, we'll have some prizes. We haven't figured those out yet, but by that time, we will have prizes for you. Noon to 3 p.m. Uh, at Atlanta Pizza in Euro. and Ar October 30th. A, yes, October 30th. Josh, you're welcome to come as well. No, and we're all, come we're, yeah, we're talking about doing some other stuff there that we can't really get into very much, but when we do, uh, Josh will be at the forefront of that, and we'll be having a lot of fun. Action Show Studios, ass subscribe uh, to our streaming network ass plus ass plus ass plus oh my buddy david marler told me to tell you hello from overhead ground i think they did something with like the regular guys back in the day but he's a big supporter of your podcast he listens all the time david marlin marler marler uh, he was like i saw you on uh, radio labyrinth nice he was well, He's hello. like, all those guys, I said, what's up? <laughs> so I did, just now. Well, thank you, Dave. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Just heard the latest news on the radio. News, 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 news. TV, and now for the latest news. Hey, before we wrap up, uh, we're going to just tell you about a couple things. Uh, there's a new Barney documentary coming out. I don't know that I'll watch it because I never really watched Barney, but it's called I Love You, You Hate Me, the dark side of PBS kids show Barney. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what the dark side could be. Yeah. I, I mocked up a poster that I made it look like the Dahmer poster. Nice. It, it was Barney on the front. Where'd you put that? <laughs> Barney beating children with his tail. <laughs> A Dahmer, give me a break. Uh, that's that's for a whole generation of parents like me who grew up with yeah. their kids watching it over and over and over again. I, I want to know what the dirt is because yeah. it, there's no yeah. way it was as wholesome as it was supposed to be. Yeah, I, yeah. I love you. <laughs> you hate me. <laughs> I love that when uh, Charles Barkley played. Uh, oh, yeah. Play yeah. Basketball on he was body Park. checking him and hitting him and shit. That was great. You got like springs and puffs coming out of, <laughs> uh -huh. of it. Uh, Moonlighting is coming to Disney Plus, right? Is it? Is it maybe a new they're, or is it? they're in talks to stream it? Okay. So the they're... original show or they remake? Yeah, the original. Yeah, you nice. can't remake it because Bruce Willis can't act anymore. Well, but, <laughs> but they're making a robot Bruce Willis. As a... You can deep fake himself. himself as a deep fake. Yeah. He was like, oh, I'm going to live forever. Yeah. 
I can't make this decision on my own because I got a fascia, but I'm going to live forever. Mount Somebody's going to live off my money. Yes. Yeah, that daughter is <clears throat> rumor. Uh, Frazier is uh, coming back. Now, didn't they say it's just going to be Frazier? Obviously, the dad's yeah. dead. Will, uh, right. will his brother be on it? Will he be mourning they, that? They said that everybody would probably come in as a cameo. But it's set in a different city, so he it's not going to be in Seattle. It's going to be in a different uh, location. So, you know, that way you can have a whole new, you know, cast of characters. He's doing the Frasier verse. Yes, and he's doing a Sunday morning financial uh, show that he paid for to be on a radio station that garners no listeners. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and he's endorsing uh, uh, male. Uh, Dick problem pills. Uh, he's Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, he's Rush Limbaugh now. Or <laughs> Alex Jones. Yeah. Drink the uh, goddamn water. <laughs> uh, the animals. There's a sequel to the animal, the Rob Schneider movie coming to Tubi. <laughs> Why? People, Why not? I love Rob Schneider movies. When did he get his breakdown to make the toaster? He should make the toaster, <laughs> or the stapler, or the carrot. Views, views. Or, 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 or. And snooze. News. Pennyworth comes back this week, season three. It's on HBO Max now. Yeah, better watch. Are all the other seasons on HBO? Yes, it's all on HBO Max now. What, right. what is this? Pennyworth. Oh, it's about. Uh, oh, is it ain't good? Batman's Butler. Yes, it's about yeah, going to good. Butler School. Learning how to put plates and forks on a table. <laughs> no, but you you know, Alfred's like a badass. In the, well, he's in supposedly like, like former SAS. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah so but he's also it. had to learn how to mop and yeah. clean banner. Yeah, and be organized. Yeah, and, and maybe a little good bacon Alaska. To Aunt, Aunt Clara, you know, we never know what happened to Aunt Clara. <laughs> and make sure that Bruce keeps his good name. <laughs> The Wayne family name may not mean anything to you, sir. <laughs> it's good, though. It's worth watching. It's a views for me. All right. Yeah, that'll be it. Number two, The Midnight Club. This is uh, the new horror series from Mike Flanagan on Netflix. Hmm. You know, he did The Haunting of Hill House yeah. and yeah. Midnight Mass. Since it's Halloween season, it's spooky views. season, he's got a new show out. I'm, I'm going to check it out. Yeah, I'll, it I'll this watch week. anything he does. Yeah. Midnight Mask got a little speechy, but mm -hmm. I still enjoyed it. Okay. Well, third show. No and uh, left the right one in. They're remaking a, a, a series out of it on Showtime. Wow. Ooh, that sounds interesting. That movie was good. Yeah. The, movie, the original movie. The original movie. Yeah. Was the, good. The, the one yeah. from Scandinavia. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. 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 This is supposed to be based more on that yeah. the, the first movie than the. Yeah, the American version sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, could, I could see how they could draw out, you know, the the story of her caretaker and her, and then you know, because that's the whole story is changing right. over to a new caretaker. So, yeah, I could see how they could stretch that out for ten episodes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna check it out since I have Showtime now that they, yeah. they added it to Paramount Plus. You have to pay to get full I Showtime. It's only three dollars more. Yeah, welcome shit. I ain't paid through dollars just to watch Red Shoe Diaries be <laughs> You what can watch City on the Hill. Yeah. What was Billions. the what was the original Let the Right One In? What was it called? Let the Right One In. Yeah, Let the Right One In, yeah, but it was, it was, it was in, in Swedish or whatever. The, yeah, the American yeah, one was, was Let the Right One In. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't a Scars Guard in that? I guess not. If it's Scandinavian, it's all Scars guards. <laughs> no, but, but there's at least probably two cast members that are related to him and his family. Yeah. Now, the are the they circle. all related? The Scars like, guards? The, yeah. The guys, and they all play Vikings. Yes, yeah. they play Vikings, uh, gay vampires, <laughs> and or bisexual vampires and True Blood. That show was good until it. Floki. Yeah, it got crazy. That guy in, in Andor is a Scars guard. Which uh, guy? The, the guy that recruited him. Oh, yeah, I don't watch it. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. That guy who uh 
He's also uh, the scientist or whatever in Thor. That's right. No, that's the dad. Yeah. Yes. He's the father he's the, of the Scars Guards. Uh, yeah. Okay. He's the Snow he's the Scars Guard. Guard. Yeah. Josh, keep us uh, updated on uh, on Bigfoot. I believe in Bigfoot and when it's coming out. And uh, if you want to have any of the people that were in it or on it or part of it on the show, you know, let me know after the big hunt. Yeah, yeah, definitely after the big hunt. I think uh, I think I'm gonna put you and Kelly in touch. But my buddy Ian Covell and I are gonna start doing a uh, Sunday improv show at seven o'clock at the Dynamic El Dorado at the beginning of the month. Uh, right. it's September, the first Sunday of every month. And where where is this place downtown? Yeah, it's over Edgewood. Okay. And you're doing another improv thing Wednesdays, right? Oh, uh, well, so there's an improv jam uh, led by Aaron Shore at the Dynamic El Dorado, and that's every Wednesday. Okay, and you're doing uh, that tonight? I'm doing it. Uh, I might do it tonight. I don't not know. Tonight, I, would, I might drive down there if you're going to do it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. I'm getting in the car and going. Yes. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks for putting up with my voice, which I am slowly losing. Oh, well, thanks for putting up with me. No, dude. <laughs> anytime. Anytime, anytime. Um, I guess until next week, thank you to everybody. Uh, oh, by the way, let's do this because I never do this. If you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. Get them to like and subscribe. If you're a person who listens to it exclusively on a podcast uh, format, you know, through your ears, just go to YouTube, find it, and subscribe because that helps you don't even have to uh watch it ever but you, but liking it and subscribing helps um you can uh follow us on social media at radio underscore labyrinth and of course we have uh the uh radio, radio, shack. Labyrinth, radio shack where you can interact and have fun and, and uh, dustin is the uh curator of that so um check it all out have fun i'm gonna go take a nap now and uh until next week Keep it cannon. Keep it cannon, fellas. Yeah,